Well, I'm here with Bill Ferris, long-time CYC member and the co-owner of the beautiful Bermudan Ketch Archina, which competed in the very first Sydney to Hobart race. Now, Bill, uh, in a couple of days' time, we've got the great veterans race and Archina is racing in that event. Give us a little bit about the history of Archina that you know of. Well, the first thing I'd clarify, Peter, is the, the, boat, the boat sailed in 45. I didn't. Uh, just to correct uh, any misapprehension there. A lot of people were wondering that, so we've cleared that up, yes. Yeah. Well, it's a very exciting day, I think, for the club and certainly for the old-timer boat owners like me and my business partner, Joe Skrinski. We own this boat together. And, um, you know, to get them together, and I know you, Peter, have been very instrumental in that, it's a great thing. And to celebrate what is a not just a great race, but it's a great iconic event for the city of Sydney and Australia. So to be a part of that in a small way is very special. Yes, well, Archina did, as I said, the 1945 Hobart race. Um, you must have a lot of history related to the boat that you know of and since you've acquired it. What do you know about that or have read about that first race? Well, the first race, there were nine starters, of which Archina was one. And uh, basically they had pretty much all been, uh, you know, harbour sailors. And this was the first big blue ocean racing event on the calendar, really. And uh, so they went to sea, frankly, and to this trek down to Tasmania, which we now know can be so challenging, to say the least. They went, in, in a sense, fairly unprepared, courageously so, sensibly because they were good seamen or enough of them on board these boats. So on Ch Archina, for example, she set off um, and um, got down the south coast, but not that far, uh, before having a, rumour says, a, a heave to for 38 hours off uh, Montague Island in a huge southerly gale. Um, and a lot of these boats would, would, would have been really very wet, you know, on board. Uh, tough circumstances. I think a couple of them didn't even have safety rails. So, in a sense, courageous, somewhat unprepared compared to today's fleets. Um, and in, um, you know, in a pioneering experimental way, in a, in, in a sense. Well, you've got the boat in, in beautiful condition, I must say. But what is the, the history? When was she launched and who she designed it? She was launched, in, she finished build in 33 with uh, Hayes Brothers over in Careening Cove here, across the harbour, and uh, launched uh, early part of 1934. Um, and um, she's been largely in Sydney since then. The, the, the original owner, um, had his, we were trying to research the name Archina, and I, of course, was going into Dr. Google, finding out archaeological sites in China, etc. But uh, it's not Archina, it's Archina, and that's the name of the Scottish woman that this owner married and bought out from Scotland and built the first Archina. It was called Archina One, I think, uh, in about 1890, and then he built this boat. Uh, so it was the second Archina, named after the Scottish lady. And designed by Cecil Bowden? Cecil Bowden, yeah. uh, an Aussie naval architect, um, and uh, yeah, he did a, a lovely job. The strength of this boat is very special. She's very strongly built, very strongly um, designed, and uh, we're thankful for that, of course. And I know she was lovingly restored and uh, outfitted for the 50th Sydney Hobart race when it was yeah. owned by John Firth Smith. Yep. And he did a terrific job getting it up to scratch and it finished the 50th race, which yep. wasn't the easiest race. So yep. um, after that, it was went through a couple of owners before you and Joe took yep. over the boat. Yeah, she's been in, uh, I think, six races in which she did finish, the Hobarts. First Smith did a fantastic uh, John First Smith, a renowned artist, wonderful character, good mm -hmm. sailor. He uh, did a great restoration on it for the 50th, did some strengthening internally, put in about six uh, tea tree knees um, for uh, some, you know, strength down below, and um, and uh, got it into good shape. We 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 inherited it in pretty good shape, and have you know. I know his right-hand man in the refit was Rob McCauley, who's a long-time CYC member, an old Astor and Solo crew man. And he yep. advised uh, John very carefully and thoroughly on the, the restoration to get it up to the 
race conditions. So they did a very good job on it. So um, yeah. it's, uh, it's as I said, it's in, in great shape. And um, do you sail it regularly? Obviously you don't do. race it regularly, but... No, we do the odd twilight race mm. and we, uh, we love the old veterans days, you know, yeah. at, at amateurs and especially here. And uh, we, um, our, we're pretty much on the boat every week yeah. and uh, taking friends out and company clients and so on and a few bottles of wine. Now what, I'll get to Bill Ferris, the man, in a moment, but you've raced a number of Hobart races, not on Archina, but having raced a Hobart, how would you have thought of racing this boat to Hobart in the, in the olden days, if you could take yourself back to 1945 perhaps? What do you think it would have been like? Oh, look, I wouldn't have known better, of course, I suppose, uh, but having done seven or eight races uh, to Hobart, um, all of which we finished, which is good, but we had, and you've seen so many more than I have, but two or three of them were between, somewhere between, you know, really tough and, oh my God, awesome. Um, and uh, what am I, I doing think, here, I think of, of the 84 race, Peter, where uh, you were on um, Drake's Prayer, no, yes, and didn't finish. Uh, we got there, luckily, and we had a good, um, this was on uh, the boat called Bewinched, and we got a third across the line and got an Illingworth Trophy uh, for, for the division position. So we've, we've come through some hard stuff. If I was contemplating that on this boat, um, just remind me not to, if uh, <laughs> you would. Uh, she'd get there and she'd, uh, she'd do her stuff, and, 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 but, but you know, I think, uh, Technology, design, uh, uh, protocols, and so on, all add up to a, uh, a much different event than than what was around in '45 and uh, early well, Bill, times. Bill, you've been a member here at the CYC since 1979, so it's uh, ah. a long time. But let's, and you've got a very close association with a very famous uh, marine company that was. Uh, in the 70s, 80s and 90s, a uh, uh, very much leader in marine fittings or hardware. Just talk about that and what that company was. Yes, well, you're referring to Barlow Marine, uh, a, a wonderful company. We, we made uh, uh, primarily yacht winches, as you know, and, uh, but also some other fittings for, for the yachting sector. And we acquired uh, a couple of competitors, the Gibb Company in the UK in the early 80s, and also the Barriant Winch Company, which was uh, a big competitor for us in particular for kit for the 12 meters and larger maxis etc. So we had a good run, we were a small Australian company exporting a lot um, and a successful manufacturing business which was good to have a, an example in a sense that it was possible to make stuff in Australia and, and, and uh, I was very proud of the people who kept the design work up to speed, uh, you know, onto self-tailing and three-speed winches, all these things seem pretty old hat nowadays, but they were cutting edge new technology, disruptive technology to the old other winch makers. So we did pretty well, did a pretty good job with that. And as you know, because I, I was lucky to grab you and drag you into the sales operation, which you did so well for us. Um, and, uh, and, and as you know, we had some great people in the company here and offshore. For me, uh, apart from that business experience, and it was a profitable experience, and they're always a bit more fun than the other ones. I've had a few of the other ones too, like most of us. Um, but uh, for me to be able to then devote and rationalise a lot of time to sailing uh, was pretty cool, you know. And so we were able to use the company and the fact that we were sailing and we were actively involved in the, in the, in the sport and with this club uh, helped, uh, helped our, our marketing operation here and abroad. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of those Hobart races. You mentioned Bewinched, which you, uh, you acquired from Rolly Tasker in Western Australia, big 62-foot Herman Frears design. You had a couple of good Hobarts with her. Yep. Uh, inch by Winch you had. Yes. With a yep. couple of characters, Dennis O'Neill and Sam yep. Gazelle. The, look, the great story on Inch by Winch was, you know, that there was a rule, I think it was Rule 26, where you, could, you couldn't have any commercial hint of a commercial logo or anything else, you know, and uh, uh, in those days, in the race. So uh, I'd uh, put some money into this boat and time and so on. I thought, gee whiz, a bit of a, bit of a possibility here we could sell a few more winches. Um, and as we went to the start of the Hobart race, 
there'd been a protest about the fact the boat was called inch by winch, which we meant as a bit of fun and so on, you know, which is all it was. Um, and um, as we came to the line, I had to lie, I was lying over the side of the hull with a spray can and I sprayed off half the logo because it was Barlow's logo and we weren't disqualified. So, and we got a lot more press yes. <laughs> for, for that uh, sort of naughty activity. But, but, but correct me if I'm wrong, didn't inch by winch become inch by inch for the Hobart race? No, it, no. It stayed, it, it, it the was, logo came off, did it? Not yeah, the only half the logo. The, the inch by winch was never a, a, a marketing uh, piece of IP for the company or anybody else. So no, it was just a name. Right. Uh, there was such a challenge, but it got knocked out sensibly enough. And then um, you represented Australia at the Kenwood Cup in Hawaii with Indian Gibber, the Far 40. Indian Gibber, yeah. yeah. Well, Gibb was, of course, the company we acquired yeah. in the UK. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, great fun. And um, yeah, an ex-Commodore uh, Roxborough with you, I believe. Isn't that Rockstar, we yeah, called Rockstar. him. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he was great fun and a really good navigator for us on Bewinched. Yeah. And uh, in fact, he, I hold him responsible and I should get him to make up for this uh, for getting me into the very first Hobart which was on his boat must have been something like 78 I think I maybe. think Matika 3 I think he Matika 3 yeah. that's it mm. yeah 36 mm. footer mm. Uh, oh man were we crammed on that you know um, but great fun it was a fairly uh, easy ride down that year if I remember and Rocky Rockstar did a great job as he has for the club I mean god talk about volunteer contribution to this club, he'd be hard to beat. Well, Bill, um, I know you're not actively involved in the, the cut and thrust of racing these days, but I know you, you keep a close eye on it. What do you think of the boats these days with canting keels and foils coming in and all of that? It's I, a different world, isn't it? Well, it is. I, I love it, actually, you know, um, to see this uh, Formula One kind of... Uh, technology take off. You think of the last 10 years and what's happened in, in, in sailing. I think Australia has been at the forefront worldwide in terms of um, sailing, that is to say equipment for sailing and the style of design and keeping up with that. I think we've got a very good record. And the sailors of course as well. You betcha, yeah. you mm -hmm. betcha. Absolutely terrific stuff and, and you know they're sought now by the Americans and the New Zealanders and everybody else. But to your question um, I, I've, I'm not ready to, to start foiling, if you know what I mean. I, 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 but if I could come back in another life, that's where I'd be. I think it'd be super exciting. Um, and I think and hope, dearly hope, that it can live alongside uh, happily and in a complementary way with traditional boating and sailing. Mm. I think it's important we keep vessels like this, uh, you know, and, and, um, and, and keep people interested in them and sail in the, in the normal way. It's a very different way of sailing, as you must know. You've done some foiling yourself? No. 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 <laughs> Would you? I'd love to, but it's, it's probably a bridge too far. Or well, a I doubt it would be far. for you, but it would be a bit, uh, yeah. bit far for yeah. me, I think. Well, yeah. Bill, thank you for your time. And uh, to you and Joe, this boat is an absolute credit. Good luck at the weekend in the race. And uh, thank you. we hope to see you in December for our classic yacht regatta, which is a two-day regatta on the harbour as a lead up to our 75th Rolex Sydney Hobart race. I'm sure you'll be a very welcome competitor and uh, the boat is, as I say, a, a wonderful credit and a, a great part of the history of the, the Sydney Hobart race. So Bill, mm. thank you very much and, and good luck. Thanks, Peter.